Okay, we are here today with Igal, who is an experienced uh, dropshipper on eBay. He has a lot of experience with virtual assistants, VAs, and today we will have a very, very, very special and interesting interview with Igal about how he find and manage his virtual assistants. Hey, Igal, how are you? Hi, Lior. I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Cool. Please tell us a bit about yourself. How did you get to dropshipping? What do you do now in dropshipping? Sure. Okay. So my story goes uh, back um, nine years ago. I uh, opened my first uh, eBay account for selling at uh, 2010. I uh, started by selling stuff I had at home. So I uh, sold my father's um, antique belt that he received from someone when he didn't know about it at the time, but I told him that I sold it for a lot of money, so he was happy for me. And then I started to look for other things that I can sell as, uh, with uh, more, uh, you know, more units so that I had to find suppliers. And uh, I started to look for suppliers in China, and I found uh, some. And uh, we started to sell uh, stuff uh, that has to do with the accessories for phones. Uh, we actually, myself and the partner that I... Uh, uh, partnered with for eBay, we became the biggest seller of uh, iPhone cables on eBay for uh, a few months. And um, yeah, and that we sold many, many things that are related to uh, technology, phones, tablets, and stuff like that. We then also uh, experienced uh, with uh, Amazon and with Amazon's FBA and warehouses and fulfillment. We would uh, buy stock and move it around the world from China, from other places, from India to the United States and sell it there. So uh, that's what we did there. Uh, and uh, in a, at some point we decided that um, there's a crisis because we had a lot of sales obviously and a lot of interest from buyers, but we didn't have any time. At the time I was a university student, so I had to focus my time on studying. And it was a point where I said like, either we, uh, you know, we shrink the business and obviously this might lead to closing it, uh, or and maybe I will try to find someone to do the job for us. Uh, which was kind of crazy at the time because you don't want to give uh, any control of your business to someone you don't know, especially all over the world on another, uh, on another continent even. Um, to do stuff for you. But we started slowly. We started with um, you know, people from India to do some small tasks, some cases of customer support uh, that uh, you know, were very, very simple to solve. And uh, then we grew slowly. When we built a team, we built, um, I think it was, uh, we grew up to a team of uh, seven or eight VAs for that account. And at some point we split parts. So um, he continued with this eBay account and I started my own ventures. Um, yeah, and at some point I did uh, also, I created a company of uh, teaching VAs to do stuff and then offering them to other people, to people who do eBay business, Shopify business and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and basically for now I'm more involved in dropshipping from Amazon to eBay. That's what I do most of the time, of course, teaching and getting uh, VAs to do some stuff for me. Cool. Just for people who don't know what is a VA, VA is a shortcut of virtual assistant. It's someone who does the work for you, actually, employed uh, who sit not near you, somewhere in the world. Um, what was your first experience with the, the virtual assistant? Did you have any problems with them or something like this? Uh, yes, yes. So um, the first experience was uh, was a learning experience. Uh, you know, you have a learning curve, especially in uh, such stuff that has to deal with people. So we started to find someone from, uh, I think it was Odesk. Um, and uh, in Odesk, we found someone by the name, I think Sarmed or something like that. I don't remember exactly his name, but he claimed to be a team of VAs from Pakistan that are working 24 seven. So uh, what we did is we started to work with him and um, he would solve our uh, customer support uh, problems. 
quick, quickly we understood that um, it's not really efficient because what he did, he did actually kind of a drop shipping of, um, uh, of people, which means that let's say we paid him $5, he paid someone else three dollars and that someone else maybe even then split it to two other people so obviously there was a big disconnect because let's say someone had one shift in the morning and had to deal with a problem with a customer and then someone else would be in the later shift and then uh, didn't see didn't notice what the other guy did with the customer and and answered uh, twice or answered wrong answers so we had a lot of uh, stuff like that which uh, led to negative uh, feedback. Also some losses, I allowed them to view uh, some very uh, uh, personal stuff that has to do with the business. Let's say uh, some PayPal transactions, and stuff like that. So wasn't very smart, but uh, I learned a lot. Of course, this is the most important. Um, I want to ask you some questions about how do you find the virtual assistants now? Uh, so first of all, what are the most important things which you are searching for when you check the uh, VAs, when you do interviews or when you search for the VAs? So that's a great question. And it uh, has something, uh, there are some things that I look at in general in any customer support or uh, uh, item research or whatever other VA I need. So there are some general things. And then th there are some specific things that I need for stuff that uh, I don't need for other stuff. For example, uh, I would always want someone to uh, be a person who notices little things, notices little stuff, and uh, has a solution, is um, you know, a solution-oriented person. And for that, what I do is I uh, ask some questions inside the, uh, the how do you call it, um, um, when I put a new uh, offering for a job, then what I do is I, I explain what the job is, what I'm looking for, and then I have a couple of questions. And if I see that the person who answers me uh, just answers something like, uh, hello, I read your job description carefully, I, would, uh, I am uh, very experienced in what you said, and I would be very interested in uh, talking to you uh, regarding a job, then I know for sure that he uh, just uh, did a copy-paste, he didn't read, he didn't pay attention. So it's very important for me to have someone who pays attention and replies accordingly. That's uh, one thing. Uh, the other thing is that, let's say I use, uh, I have uh, something that, uh, an opening for a customer support. So what I do is I put a customer support question inside uh, the job offering. And then I want to see, first of all, whether they actually answer it at all, because many will not answer, and again, not paying attention. Uh, B, uh, do they have um, good English skills? Do they answer correctly? And C, do they know ac actually the right answer? Are they smart enough or experienced enough to know what to do in such tasks? So that's something that's uh, very important for me. Um, also, I want to have people who are um, uh, good with timing. So if you decide that you want to start an interview at a certain point, you want to make sure that they are there and they're ready. Also, uh, you know, sometimes they don't have um, a good internet connection, which is, by the way, something that you can see by doing a screen share in the interview. You know, if uh, the screen is very choppy and very lagging, then you know probably it would be a problem in the, uh, when they start to work. Um, yeah, also I want them to have a good environment to work in. You don't want someone who is working from an internet cafe and you hear in the background some buses going over and a, a dog barks. Uh, it happened to me a lot of times in interviews and ask them, do you have any place to work in? I say, yeah, sometimes I go to an internet cafe if I need to work on the PC. Um, not good for me. You want someone who has access to the internet, access to computers, and who obviously understands English and understand basic things about technology. The other stuff we can uh, teach them, obviously. This is a great tip to do a video interview to check the internet connection. Uh, yeah. You can also, by yeah. the way, you can do a speed test. You can ask them in the interview, uh, when you do a screen share, to go to a site called speedtest.net and then click on go. And it will show you exactly what uh, bandwidth they have actually. Cool. 
Yeah, this is a very common uh, problem with uh, all these uh, VAs because they're usually from countries where they have uh, problems with the internet. Yeah. Yes. Super important. Where do you search for the VAs? Uh, on which sites or Facebook groups? How, how do you do it? Okay, so um, yeah, I think this is, uh, this is important to know because sometimes you can uh, reach places where it seems like you can find some good uh, personnel, but uh, it's just a waste of time. Um, what, what I found is the best, if you have the option, is if you already have someone who is working for you, who is good, is to ask them for a recommendation for someone else they know that uh, can help uh, with that. Because usually people, you know, uh, you are the average of the five closest people to you. Is that what they say? It's kind of the, you know, the saying. So if your VA is good and uh, does a good job, uh, you can ask them if they have some friends uh, that are looking for a full-time or half-time job, whatever you need. So that's one. Uh, if you don't have a VA, it would be difficult to find recommendation from someone like that. So um, some people go to uh, agencies. And actually, I had an agency, what I told you about, a business which uh, teaches uh, VAs. But uh, there are some uh, negative points with that, especially you don't know what they learned before, what the agency told them and uh, taught them. Uh, also, you pay the agency usually a higher uh, fee than they actually get, than the VA gets. So let's say sometimes it's ridiculous. I know one place where they charge 15 or $20 an hour and actually pay the VA like 3 or $4. And I think it's, it's not fair because he does the job. Why are you taking like most of the money? So th that's, that's something uh, uh, to, uh, to think about. Also, you pay per hour even uh, for the learning. So you both pay to source the person to the agency and you also pay uh, the money while you're teaching uh, your stuff um, to this VA from the agency. And sometimes it's just, you know, more and more uh, things you have to pay for and not always uh, a good choice. Uh, sometimes it is, uh, but uh, that, that's, uh, that's one uh, another way. Uh, the place that I find the most uh, qualified people is in the Philippines. It's a site called onlinejobs.ph. Are you familiar with that? Yeah. Mm. So this site, if you know how to do filtering efficiently, like if you create a good system of filtering people, a good job offering, it's amazing. It's like you can find diamonds there and you can find people to do crazy stuff like uh, developers that charge a, a small amount of like five to seven dollars an hour where in other places they, they would charge like three times more. So uh, this only is jobs like this, right? this is a paid site. Yes, yeah, so it, the plan there is like that. It's um, a site where you can sign up for free and get your job offering for free to be posted. But then if you want to see the contact details of people who are contacting you, then you have to pay, uh, I think it's between 50 and $70. Uh, it always changes. Today, I think it's like $60 per month. However, you can, after you um, found the people that you need, you can cancel it anytime and then continue whenever you need that to hire again. So uh, that's it. Why do you prefer this site over, for example, uh, Upwork or uh, Facebook groups uh, of uh, virtual assistants? So uh, Facebook groups, um, I kind of had the mixed experience there because you don't have any filtering there. Anyone almost can join or anyone can pretend. And there are no um, tests that they take. In uh, online jobs, you have this kind of... Um, um, how do you call this? It's like a level of, uh, of ID proof where you can filter by what did these people provide. For example, some people put their uh, uh, driver's license. Some people put their um, uh, ID and uh, diploma, for example, if they did um, uh, first or a second degree uh, as a proof. And also some tests that the site has that they have taken. And then the sites show you what uh, were their uh, performance there and stuff like that. So this filtering is saving you a lot of time and money. Uh, for Facebook groups, um, I wouldn't say that this is uh, the case because there's a lot of scams over there. 
not only for people who are searching for a job, but also for people who are offering jobs. You know, people that want to find a lot of emails and then send some spam and send some uh, uh, stuff that's not uh, relevant to what they're looking for. Uh, now, regarding the other uh, sites that you mentioned, uh, Upwork and stuff like that, they are good sites, but um, they're not really focused on VAs necessarily. They're more uh, focused towards freelancers and uh, per project, on a per project basis, if you know what I mean. And uh, the people there maybe are good, but that's such a big, uh, big audience and um, you know, uh, for me, it just uh, took a lot of time to filter the right ones. Also, it's not only from the Philippines, it's from other countries too. Um, and I really love the Philippines to find my VAs. So that's why I uh, focus on onlinejobs.ph. Cool. I work a lot with uh, Upwork. I think that the, the biggest uh, minus in uh, Upwork is that all the payments should go over Upwork and then Upwork takes money for this. And a lot of people are afraid to go out of Upwork. This is why yeah. sometimes online jobs uh, PH is really better. But I suggest actually people to try both of the sites and check with everyone what they like. For sure. Uh, but yeah, well, thank you for the tips. It's really important. Uh, why do you pre prefer the Philippines? Did you try other countries like Ukraine or India or Pakistan? Oh yeah, man, I tried so many countries, it's ridiculous. I, I think I had experience with like 15 countries of uh, people from different uh, places. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if I told this before, but I started with the VAs uh, about one year after I started the eBay business. So like we did a lot of trial and error and grew with this. Um, we tried at the people uh, from uh, uh, Pakistan, I think these were the first ones, then India. Uh, China, even uh, Bulgaria, Romania, um, uh, Russia, uh, I think from Chile, someone uh, from Argentina, from uh, Spain. Well, yeah, a lot of countries. And um, well, first of all, you can find in any country, you can find great talents. That's for sure. But the, ask, the, the question is, where is it uh, the most efficient for you to look for? And uh, what we found out and what I found out is that the Philippines have this um, great uh, composition of both uh, the salary there is very low for people. So it's uh, very good for businesses that are starting out and that are doing something online. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is that they have their uh, very good um, potential for uh, learning English. Some of them uh, are very proficient in English. And even more than that, they have some companies, big companies like Microsoft and others that are taking them through classes that will remove their accents. So it looks like you're talking to someone from the United States, it's crazy. I had some people, some, uh, some managers I hired from the Philippines that, uh, that speak, first of all, much better than me in terms of accent, but their also writing skills are far superior than what I saw in other countries. Now, sure, you can find people in India that know English uh, really well. This is the uh, official language there. But, you know, have, have you ever talked to someone from India in English? Yeah, yeah it's how. <laughs> you, you immediately understand that they're from India and kind of, uh, you know, they have a, a different mentality. In the Philippines, they have this mentality of um, being very... Um, uh, oriented at helping people uh, at understanding problems and resolving them so um, yeah I, I found it really uh, uh, interesting for me to look uh, to look for and then I found that there I can find really the good people that uh, fit my business cool nice uh, how do you avoid uh, the VAs cause any damage to your business or do something which can hurt you um, but this is a, a really good question and uh, what I'm going to tell you I'm not just I will not just uh, I say things that I uh, uh, imagine out of my head it, things that really happened and then I will learn from that uh, you um, you know uh, people especially from uh, uh, poorer countries like the Philippines uh, when they see a big amount of money or an opportunity to uh, you know uh, to have uh, uh, you know an easy money 
uh, and earn easy money, uh, it's important to make sure that you don't uh, put yourself in a vulnerable, vulnerable position, which means you don't share with them uh, your PayPal access or other things that have money. For example, you have to be very careful with giving them um, access to, let's say, any supplier site or Amazon where you have uh, gift cards loaded because what they can do, they can even if they're living in the Philippines, they can find someone who is in the United States and then send them the product and then, uh, you know, it would look like it's a purchase that you made, uh, that someone made from, uh, you know, from eBay to the United States where actually it's the VA is trying to uh, do some uh, not very legitimate business. Uh, also, you know, obviously PayPal, you don't give them uh, full access because they can uh, take uh, money and uh, run away with it. Uh, I wouldn't even recommend uh, giving them limited access to eBay, eBay to, um, uh, to PayPal. Uh, you don't have, um, you don't know where are the blind spots. You don't know where they can make these uh, uh, tricks, uh, the backdoor uh, tricks. And so, uh, you know, only if it's someone that you trust that worked for you like three, four, five months, I would grant them um, some limited access. Also, uh, AutoDS obviously has this uh, limited access that you can grant to your, um, to your VAs, which is good. So that's one thing to notice. Uh, also, you can use a screen uh, capturing software that you require the VA to work with when they're working for you. What it does is that it takes uh, screenshots uh, random, uh, randomly at, uh, let's say, every 50 to 70 seconds. They take a, ra uh, they take a random screenshot of the, sc of the screen. And then you see if while they're working for you, are they doing what they're supposed to do or are they doing some other stuff? Uh, in addition to that, I would uh, highly suggest have a uh, a spreadsheet that you share with them, like a Google Sheets or whatever other place or Dropbox you can also share. And there they will have to record what they did each time that they're working. Um, so let's say I have someone who has to list um, items for me. I want them to also not only list the items, I want them to also uh, put their, the amount of items that in, in, the, in the spreadsheet, the amount of listings that they put, uh, maybe even uh, what titles they optimize. So then I can cross-reference and see that they're actually doing their job. So that's a thing that uh, I uh, recommend. Also strategically, never give your every VA the full picture of your business. So I don't give a VA uh, to do uh, both customer support and uh, optimizing items and finding items and all the other stuff. Simply, simply because I, I, first of all, I don't want them to be confused because it's a lot of information. You know how difficult it is to run a business that has so many facets, so many things that you can do. But also, um, when they see the picture, it's like they might start to think, hey, I can do this business myself. I will steal ideas and stuff like that. So although it happens rarely, uh, I don't want to expose myself to, you know, to stuff like that. Um, and finally, what I would say is that uh, when you're working with uh, other people, be it uh, VAs or, you know, just workers who are physically uh, with you in the office, you have to assume risk. Uh, things happen. Uh, people uh, sometimes will, uh, uh, you know, will copy your uh, uh, client's uh, list or will copy your business idea and start something of their own. Um, However, I mean, it, it happens rarely, but it does happen. But you have to think the, uh, the cost and the benefit. That you're getting. For example, for me, I can't run a, a successful business, I believe, without two, three, or four people that are helping me grow and expand. Like for me to get to that level, I'll have to uh, work with other people. So either I just stay at the lower level by myself, or I expand my business, earn more, and then accept the possibility that, you know, sometime someone might uh, start uh, and be a competitor. That's part of uh, doing business. Yeah, I totally agree with you. It's funny, I also hear uh, more than one case where the VA really uh, did the trick which you said about the Amazon, that they bought uh, products to themselves. 
or yeah. their parents, some who live in the uh, United States. Uh, I also hear the uh, cases where the VA created another eBay store and just took all what he learned uh, from the owner of the store and copied it. And yeah. that's why this uh, tip is really, really important to split the knowledge between different people. This way they, they don't have the full picture and they can't really open the store without you. Yeah, it's uh, also more efficient if you think about it. Yeah, this way it also can grow easily. Uh, you said about uh, uh, screen capturing uh, programs. Do you have any recommendation for a tool like this? Um, well, there are plenty. You have a time proof, which is from online uh, jobs. You have um, a time doctor, I think uh, it's called. Uh, you have uh, hub staff, which also have this possibility. Um, there are plenty, just search for it. You can find it for free uh, in uh, many places. Uh, as long as it's something that you, it's easy to work for you and for the VA to install, then you know, what, choose whatever is uh, best for you. Cool. Uh, by the way, we are in uh, Hubstock also in Autodesk. Uh, great tool. Yeah. Uh, what? What is the best way to teach a virtual assistant a task? Do you have any recommendation how to do it right? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, there is, um, uh, I think the most effective way is uh, to create a video in which you do the task and uh, you do it from start to finish. However, you also uh, construct it in such a way where there are problems or challenges. I'll give you an example. For example, you hire someone to order stuff for you from Amazon. If you choose to take upon yourself the risk to give them access to Amazon, then you give them the task to purchase an item and uh, you know to make sure that they put all the details correctly, uh, which AutoDS, by the way, has the bot that does it automatically, obviously, but just an example. Uh, what you would do in the video you would uh, also put an error. For example, the item is out of stock or there are no prime items or the address that the buyer gave you is uh, incorrect or something there is missing. For example, sometimes uh, you have cities that are near each other and then the buyer puts the name of one city, but actually if you take it to Google, if you look at Google, it's the other name, it's the name of the uh, neighboring city. And then when you put it, it's the right address and so, uh, the, um, the order goes through. But if you wouldn't do that, the order would fail. And so you show them these exceptions and show how to deal with them in the video itself. And you have to think for yourself, what are the most common problems that you can troubleshoot right, right there so that they won't have to ask you, hey, listen, I had this problem, how, what, what do I do? So we create this video. And one advantage of that is that um, we, especially from the Philippines, are uh, a lot of times a bit shy. They will try to do something, and the, if they encounter an, an error, they wouldn't ask you. So this way, what the video does is that they can watch it how many, however many times they want. They can watch it one time or ten times and see what is the solution to what they're asking, so they won't have to bother you. And then for you, it's less problems, more profit, and all, all are happy. So uh, this is uh, one, one thing. And for each um, task, there are different strategies of how to uh, engineer this kind of video to make sure that you cover all the bases, or most of the bases. Um, what also is important is uh, to make sure that the uh, VA understood what you taught them. So you want them to both show it to you and, and explain in their words what they understand from what, how to do the task. And this way, it's kind of this back and forth is very important to see that you don't have any blind spots that you didn't think of or the VA didn't think of that you don't know it could cause a problem. And you can solve it uh, right there before the problem actually happens. Yeah, also uh, usually the ACE has this uh, thing that they always say yes, 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 I know, I know, I know, I understand. And this way you can really check that they really understand everything. Yes, yes, uh, Mr. Lior, yes, sir, yeah, like that. And then uh, yeah. that happened. Uh, yeah, also you have to think of the tasks as um, 
as a recipe. You have to kind of write uh, action plan, one to 10 of uh, very simple actions to, to complete the task. So you can show it to them and then they'll have both the video, which they can uh, uh, watch and learn, and also this, uh, this list, which they can reference to and understand precisely what and where to do. And this way you kind of cover 99% of the problems so that the process is much more efficient. Cool. Another way which I use is uh, Asana. Uh, we put a task in Asana and then uh, any employee before he uh, put it as completed, they just need to put a tag of done. And only after we check it, we can put it as completed. This way we have like two steps verification that everything really uh, done. So yeah. This uh, nice way. Mm -hmm. How much do you usually pay to the VAs from the Philippines? Uh, it depends on what they do. Usually, if it's something uh, general, then um, I would say between two and three dollars is a good amount. If it's something more specific that requires a more expertise, for example. Well, developers are uh, much more expensive. It's like, uh, still, it's a low price, but I would say between five and twenty dollars, which is also stupidly, stupidly cheap if you if you think about it. That you know, in uh, developed countries, it's like a hundred dollars per hour. But um, these are the prices for graphic designers. Excuse me. For graphic designers, it's. Um, between uh, four and ten dollars it depends on uh, what uh, a portfolio they have how experienced do they have the programs and the advanced programs that are needed to work um data mining is something very a uh, data entry i'm sorry is something very very basic you can teach like anyone to do that so even two dollars is enough for that i wouldn't recommend uh, trying to find someone uh, very cheap and uh, you know find the unicorns what uh, someone some people call uh, because of a couple of things first of all they're probably not very good or not very confident in themselves that they offer to work at such a price uh, second of all it's like uh, i mean we're not uh, doing slavery we're working with people who want to have enough money to support their family usually it's either single moms or newly um, new or moms that had their babies uh, recently and they want uh, you know to provide and have enough uh, money for that and then no one is stopping them from receiving an offer that's like uh, uh, 20 cents per hour more than you're offering and then they'll run away to that person so for example I found someone that, that will be doing my job for 1.5 dollars uh, no one is stopping someone else to easily offer like $1.8 and then they'll run away and you'll never hear from them. So you kind of want to be fair. You want to be in the competitive uh, market range of prices. And also, you know, 2 to $3, it's, it's crazy. It's very cheap. Uh, you, you, you know how uh, prices go with people who are doing customer support in uh, developed countries in, uh, in Israel or in the United States or even in, uh, in Europe, in uh, even in like, uh, well, Romania is a good place, actually, they have also good prices. But it's very cheap and you don't have to cheap out, you don't have to try to find the cheapest, find someone who is good and uh, pay them uh, in that range. Cool, amazing. Uh, do you have anything more that maybe I missed about uh, the A's before I go to some other uh, questions? Hmm. Well, we can talk about a lot of things. For example, uh, how do you uh, criticize them? For example, how uh, if they did something wrong, how do you make sure that uh, you're telling them, like uh, you're giving them the right uh, critique and uh, make sure that they uh, fix stuff? Uh, how do they? It's interesting. <laughs> okay. So, do you know the uh, sandwich method? No. Okay. <laughs> it's funny. It's like. You start with the compliment, which is the upper like bun, and then you have the actual uh, critique or the thing that you want to fix, and then you finish also with a compliment. So together it's like a sandwich. And what it means is that, you know, we start with something like, uh, uh, listen, uh, Max, uh, first of all, I'm happy to hear that, uh, you know, you're trying your best. I see that you put a lot of thought in this thing. However, uh, 
the way you answered uh, this uh, client here um, could be improved. Uh, let's say you didn't include the other options of the refund or uh, they could also have a replacement and this is something that's important to include and you missed it. And that way, you know, we we'll, we'll lose money. So I, I'd like you to, uh, to make a point of that and next time to include uh, like the other solutions that we have as a store. Uh, and then the third part, which should be also a compliment. And so again, thank you for your, your time. I think you're doing a great job overall. And I think it will be easy for you to fix because I know that other problems that we had, you really fixed really well and uh, had great results. So this is the way you kind of uh, criticize them, but you give it to them in a good way that you know they don't take it personally and they actually want to improve. And then, as I said to you before, with how you teach people stuff, you also ask them to now explain what you explain them to do, the fix, uh, in their own words. So that way, you know, they understood it and will actually implement. So that, that's another tip for you. Cool. Amazing. So uh, actually, I uh, uh, contacted you from a Facebook group of uh, free videos. Can you talk us about uh, this group a bit? How did you start this group and why? What is this group actually? Yeah, sure. So I started this group um, uh, with uh, Maor, Maor Amar, which is also a very, very uh, successful uh, eBay seller. And he's in the community of uh, eBay's Israel. He's very known and very respected. And uh, what we do in this group is uh, currently just uh, putting some really awesome videos that are uh, about how to create uh, great items, how to sell better. For example, there is a, a tip there of how to drive like three, four, five times more traffic to your listings uh, using uh, some tips and tricks that uh, I think 99.9% .9 of eBay sellers don't even know exist. So you can take advantage of that. Um, yeah, and I'm just putting a lot of uh, good free content there that is based on my experience and on experience of other people that I've been working with inside of the eBay community. Uh, and it's free, it's like you can join the group. You even don't have to join the group, it's open uh, for access for all, but if you join, then you have you know, the updates and you're more involved and you can ask many questions, stuff like that. So uh, oh. that's the group. And uh, people can like, uh, request, <laughs> request the videos which you can uh, create for them and how does it work? Or you just uh, post videos? Absolutely. If you have ideas, uh, you know, let me know. I'll uh, I'll do my best. I find that I, um, you know, I find a great joy of uh, creating videos because I try to do it with good energies, and um, people can really take advantage of experience of people who are uh, eight or nine years in this industry, because we know how ch things changed over time. Like I don't know from. 2015 and 2019 are very different in terms of how eBay uh, treats people. And for that, you have different solutions, ways of how you put items, way of how you, you know, you, doing drop shipping now is, uh, is a bit more difficult than it was before. So you have to be smarter. And uh, I think with all the knowledge that we have, we can really uh, give people good, good tips of how to avoid things, how to avoid, you know, getting your account suspended, how to have more, you know, eBay sometimes will remove visibility of your listings if they find that you're doing um, drop shipping from other retail sites. Well, stuff like that, I think it could be very helpful. I don't remember the question that you asked, I'm sorry, but uh, hopefully that gave some insight. Yeah, cool. So I will put a link to this group under uh, this video. And I think actually that's all if you don't have anything to add. Uh, well, yeah, well, the group is called uh, Dropshipping Free Videos. That's how it's called. And yeah, you'll have the link uh, below that uh, Leo will put. And I just want to say how uh, cool it is uh, talking to you because I don't know if you remember, probably you do, but I'll just want to say that uh, back uh, like three years ago, something like that, we did an event in uh, Tel Aviv. And I remember that you were in the first line. Do you remember you were sitting in the first line on the right side? And you were with this uh, notebook and you were taking notes and asking questions and look what uh, happened and how well you've, uh, you've taken that and you've developed it. And you have this amazing system now that helps many, many sellers uh, do drop shipping. And I think it's inspiring. I think it's great that uh, you did that. And 
yeah, so it's like uh, interesting to see this development of how it was then and how it's now. It's crazy in a very good way. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think uh, this event is where we started. I was I all there with my uh, partner, previous partner, the first one. And uh, we came there with the tool which was only for ourselves. And then when we said about the tool, if you remember, we had like a meeting, like uh, everyone should say what he does on eBay. So we said about the tool and everyone said, that, wow, why you don't publish this, this tool? So we saw that we need to go with it to the market. <laughs> That's awesome, yeah. man. That's really, really awesome. Yeah, thank you. There you also uh, teach about uh, the ace and this why also I remember this and uh, told you that uh, we must uh, do this uh, video. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot, uh, if you guys want uh, to, you know, to find a VA, if you want someone like to have some really professional consulting with that, you can contact me and uh, we can uh, find something, you know, and to avoid some uh, painful mistakes that I did and others do and, you know, find it very efficiently and very uh, quickly. So that's good. Cool. Thank you very much, Igor. Sure. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.